Magandang araw po. Ako si Albi Tangkol. At ako naman si Kim Bernardo Lokin. Ito ang Diretsyong Pananaw. Ngayong araw, makakausap natin ang isa sa mga Vice Presidential Candidate. At ito po ay walang iba kung hindi si Deputy House Speaker at dating Manila Mayor Lito Atienza. Magandang, Magandang araw, araw po, po kung Lito. Magandang araw sa inyong dalawa. Mabuhay. Wow. wow. Okay. So, nakita mo, mabulaklak ang ating uh, oh, oh. set ngayon. Na Kaya nga, ang unang-unang tanong palagi eh. Si Kong Lito, simula nang ito ay nakita ng mga tao sa politika, ay palaging nakasuot ng polo na maraming bulaklak. Correct. Kung siguro yun ang unang tanong natin para hindi pa tayo masyadong seryoso. Uh, Bakit mo palaging bulaklakin? A, it carries a statement on my part. Which I is? believe that uh, the nation should be proud of our natural culture, tasteful colors, and our own uh, tropical character. We are in the tropics. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Al, but uh, wearing a coat or a suit, <laughs> mabuti naman wala kang necktie. <laughs> yung necktie, pang Occident, pang, ano, pang America, yun, mm -hmm. pang Canada, pang Europa. Eh dito, we, we should wear our own uh, uh, tasteful colors. And as I said, we are in, in, in the tropics, and wearing a floral, colorful shirt mm -hmm. goes with the terrain, mm -hmm. and you'll find it very practical. Na magang araw mo, makulay, at uh, lahat ng mga nakakausap mo sa araw na yun, ay ganun din ang And studies and after studies have been made, colorful floral attire makes a person more productive mm. than one who wears a coat and a suit and dark suit pati yung mga bangko kaya mga bangko sa Japan they encourage their employees to wear floral colorful uh, attire at certain days of the week mm. in Hawaii of course every day yeah, every the day. floral day dito sa atin dapat dito sa atin ganun din every day is floral day dal Talagang panahon dito sa atin ganyan eh. Tsaka yung ating nakaraan, ang Pilipino yung makulay. Sa probinsya, yung mga nagtatanim, kita mo, nagsusunod na red pants, yellow pants, brown pants, colorful shirts, and checkered, colorful floral shirts. Dahil yun ang ating kailangan eh. Yung asawa mo, malayo pa sa bukid natatanaw mo dahil sa kulay ng kanyang suot. <laughs> yun, yeah. yun ang sasabihin ko kong LA actually mm. na lalo na sa pag-iikot nyo ngayon, lalo na sa probinsya, no? So, siguradong yan ay kitang-kita kayo. Lutang na lutang kayo ngayon. Hindi Tama. Ay, yun so, din ang tinatanong sa sa probinsya. Ano ba pakiramdam nyo pagka kayo nakasuot na ganyan? Sabi ko, Pilipino. Mm -hmm. I, Saka I, very identifiable si Kong Lito dyan, eh, di ba? At least that's... Pag nakita mong... Oh, okay. Merong isang politiko na nakasot ng ganyan. Si Kong Lito yun. Wala na <laughs> oh, di, actually, maganda yun. Yan yung kanyang pati, state. Pati Muslim. Ang Muslim colors, kung isipin ninyo. Colorful. Yellow, yes. red, green. Di ba? Gold. Colorful ang ating pagkatao bilang Pilipino. Eh. Oh, nga. Pinalungkot lang tayo ng mga banyaga. Ano si ba? Oo, oh, sinakop tayo. Tapos sinuroan tayo magsuot ng suot nila. Hindi naman natin suot ito eh. Yung, So, Yung, attorney Al, ha? Hindi. Tawa, naka-blazer oh, ka. So, <laughs> at least makulay ako. Ikaw ang medyo, buti na lang wala kang necktie ngayon. Hindi. Sorry. Pero, kung LA, sige. <laughs> May iba tayo ngayon bago mo pa masita ulit ang damit ni attorney Al. Actually, running mate po kayo, of course, ng ating presidential candidate na ngayon na si Senator Manny Pacquiao. At, kayo po, ito under sa Probinsya Muna Development Initiative or from the party. Actually, ang tanong ko sa inyo, kasi nag na natin si Kong LA dito sa Manila Times sa TV, no? Ang tanong ko... Inaugural yata yun, first, first broadcast yata niya yun. Oo, actually oh. soft naman, di ba? Bago maglo-launch, kaso nagka-pandemic, so yan ang problema natin. Pero ngayon, ang tanong ko, Kong LA, wala naman sa plano ninyo nung nag-uusap tayo muli. Bakit suddenly ngayon, bigla kang tumakbong vice president? Wala talaga sa plano ko. O ano nangyari? Kaya yung buong pamilya ko, mga anak ko nagulat, sila Kim. Mm -hmm. Sabi niya, Dad, madaling araw tumakbong. Oh, bakit kanina nakita ko sa, sa retrato, sa television, nag-file ka ng sabi ko, ako mismo nagulat eh. So, <laughs> don't get shocked. I'm also shocked. Dahil, kinausap ako ni Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. Manny is an old, old protege of mine. Matagal ko ng kaibigan niyan. Mm -hmm. uh, bata pa siya, bago pa siya sa boxing. Pero, 
kaibigan ko na siya. And I know his character. He's got a good character. At saka gusto ko yung fighting spirit niya. Ang mga kinalaban niyan, higante. Mm -hmm. uh, Margarito is the biggest. Mm -hmm. uh, more than six foot tall yun. Eh. At saka 174 yun. Nilaban niya sa, sa ring. And he was 147. Bakit naman? Pero tinalo niya. Ha? Sumuko yung mga higante. Oscar de la Hoya, mm -hmm. Morales, uh, Barrera, uh, Cotto. Uh, these are legendary boxing figures na pinatulog niya dun sa kanyang on the way to become the eight a champion of eight divisions mm -hmm. in boxing in the world. Na wala pang nakagawa. Eh, wala pang nakagawa at wala pang palagay ko walang makakagawa nun eh. From 102 pounds up to 147 he became champion all the time, all the way. Mm -hmm. That is a superhuman feat. Sabi nga ng mga American sportscaster, Pacquiao is not human. This man must be some uh, from outer space. So he's an alien. <laughs> talaga, ano, hindi, hindi, hindi ka makakapaniwala na how can this guy who was 102 at one time, pat, pat pati niya eh, mm -hmm. become champion all the way up to 147. So Pacquiao is a very talented, brilliant, I would consider him a genius because hindi ka mananalo sa boxing pag ikaw ay bobo eh. Sinasabi ng mga malulupit sa ating bansa, bobo, bobo. Mm -hmm. So hindi siguro, ka... yun ang next nating question oh. uh, mm. kung lito. Kasi yun ang kasabi, bakit mo iboboto si Manny Pacquiao? Eh wala namang alam yan. <laughs> Di ba? Pero yun yung linya ng sagot nyo. Yun ang reaction ko. Pagtatawanan ko yung magsasabi nun sa pagkat. Pag sinabi mo walang alam si Manny Pacquiao, para mo sinabing, hindi naging champion niya dahil hindi ka magiging champion. In fact, hindi ka mananalo sa boxing pag bobo ka. Baka makachamba ka isang laban, pero kung bobo ka, <laughs> pangalawang laban talaga yung tulog ka na. But Manny is a genius. He knows how the opponent would move. Gumalaw lang ang tenga nun. Alam na niya kung saan magagaling ang suntok. Gumalaw ang balikat. Alam niya kung saan sasanggahin. Tama. You have to be a very, very... Disciplined, good planner, sharp mind, reflexes, and a fighting spirit. Lihat na, lahat siya ng elemento ng magaling na leader. Eh. Kasi dapat, ano, very quick decision quick. making. Oh, you, when you're on your toes, you boxing really with somebody have, else, yes. you cannot wait. And, Teka muna, tatanayin ko yung... <laughs> <laughs> oh, pero, pero kung LA... Um, my question is, parang napakasaden naman po ng inyong uh, decision para matumakbong vice president. In, in a way, yeah. sudden, no? Dal talagang sudden. Eh. Pero dahil sa aming pagkakilala sa isa't isa, mm -hmm. siya naman daw, sabi niya, I've been praying hard, give me a good partner, a good vice president. And give me the, uh, in, in his discernment, give me the, uh, the message of whom to choose. Pasok daw ng pasok yung, pang yung pangalan ko. Si Lito Atienza, Atienza is your perfect match, per partner. So he called me finally, on the eve of the deadline. Uh, could we talk? I go, sure. Ano na yun, gabi na yun. And dun niya pinaluanag, sabi niya, I need you because I know you and you are also very clean in your political government record. So, wala kang anumang mancha, wala kang corruption issue. And I am going to run on a platform of cleaning up the government. Eh, pinag-aralan ko lahat ito mga potential vice president ko. Eh, medyo hindi lulusot eh. Baka ituro sa akin. Eh, yung vice president mo, ganito, ganyan. Ikaw, no one can point any finger at you because I know you. I've known you for 21 years and I've admired your public record. And can I ask you to be my running mate. Sabi, teka muna, sabi ko, binigla mo ako nun ah. <laughs> Para binigyan mo ako ng left hook dyan ah. Sabi ko, can I have some time to pray also? Ikaw, you've been praying ka mo. Let me pray also and find out my, in my discernment whether I should or not. Pero ano man ang gawin ko? Hindi ako makatulog nung gabing yun. Yung katawan ko, tulog na. Pero yung, yung brains ko, Talaga nagtatrabaho, trying to uh, get an answer from my prayers. And early morning, kung alas 5, 
nagbisaya daw ko sabi ko kasamahan ko na ito mm-hmm. uh, he needs uh, support and that's also my dream all this time in in my politics to finally give the Filipino an opportunity at a better life because I know that we have been created by God not to not to be poor uh, not, not to suffer forever to, to, to mismanagement we need a big change in our government so that the people will finally get opportunities at a better life the basics as guaranteed by the constitution roof food yan ay guarantee eh yan ay binibigay yan ng walang diskusyon eh hindi naman nakukuha ng ating mga kababayan eh padami ng padami ang mga may hirap ha Siguro naman, nakikita mo sa, sa highway, pag pumara lang yung kotse mo, may tumutuktok na. Tama. Humihingi ng limos. Uh-huh. Eh, pag hindi tayo nagbago ng ating pamamaraan, at yung tradisyonal na mga dumaan na, at bumabalik sa Malacanang, at gustong bumalik sa Malacanang, eh, walang pagbabagong magaganap. Because they've been given the opportunity, they did not uh, address the problem squarely. Uh-huh. They studied, They got their diplomas and all these uh, qualifications, but they became uh, the biggest thieves in our government. The brightest that we've had, alam mo naman kung sino yun, top notcher sa bar. But he's, he's also considered the destroyer of the economy of the Philippines. So from a very, very good economy, we ended up kulela in Asia mm-hmm. after we ousted him. So you can see that the Pakya was the right thinking and I am with him 100%. To me, my running is not important. My winning is not important. God allowed me to be on this, in this place now so that I can explain to the, the people. Dagdag ko lang yan, Kim, ano? Oo, sige. Para sa kaalaman ng mga nanonood sa atin, ano? Kasi nabanggit ni Kong Lito, ano? Yung parang answered prayer ni sa ni Senator Pakya, ano? na ibigay si Kong Lito as his running mate dahil uh, walang bahid ang integridad nitong taong ito. No? Uh, sa kaalaman ng ating mga manonood, si Kong Lito, uh, more than 50 years na sa public service. Correct. Pagkatapos, nagsimula ito, vice mayor ng Manila. Naging three-term mayor ng Manila. The only. The only. The only three-term. Wala pang nakaka-three-term. Tapos, nag, ano to, secretary ng environment. Environment. No? Yes. National, And, national housing. housing. No? Tapos, naging uh, representative ng Buhay Party list since 2013. Three, three terms then. Yan. So, napakaganda talaga ng record niya mm-hmm. in terms of politics. Tapos, politics without any taint of corruption. Yun ang importante. Al, I was, I've been very, very careful. Uh, alam mo, yung minana ko sa father ko. My father was a pu- public servant also. I, I, to me, wala pang barangay nun. Tatay ko, barangay chairman eh. Basta may problema yung community, sumasagot yun. Maski na yung kanyang kahuli-huli ang piso, ibibigay sa kapitbahay yun. And in his, in his dying moments, he called me. He got me to listen to his words. Eh, may binubulong siya eh. Pinakinggan ko. At sabi niya sa akin, Uselito, Uselito ang tawag niya sa akin. Wala akong maiiwang yaman sa'yo. But I have a good name and I develop a lot of friends. Pag ikaw pumasok sa politika, mananalo ka. True enough. The good name of my dad gave me the break in politics. And ako naman, kaya ako nag-iingat, nag-iingat na nag-iingat. Any, any sign of corrupt practice, hindi ko pinapabayaan yan. In all the positions I've held, housing, city hall, I handled the sidewalk vendors at one time, the city slaughterhouse, graph reading yan, at jaka dyan, pag tumanggi ka, baka may paglalagyan ka dahil matatala sa mga mga kutsilyo ng mga <laughs> dyan. Ano? Marami kong dinaanan, Al, in environment, ang daming ano dyan, daming tukso. And even in po- politics, When I was running against uh, the KBL in Manila, sabi nila, walang laban si Lito. Email na ang kalaban niyan, KBL. At saka hindi lang yun. Pinadala na ko ng maraming pera. I had to return it. Sabi ko, hindi. I cannot receive money from my uh, 
opponent. Well, my opponent doesn't make sense, ha? Huh? Uh-huh. Oh, DNR, Department of Environment. Doon ko nakita yung big time corruption na talagang yung Malampaya Fund, this one. Have you ever benefited from it, mm-hmm. Al? Ikaw? Wala mm-hmm. kaming, mm-hmm. actually, malaking Nobody. issue na naman yan ngayon, mm-hmm. Kong Yali, di ba? Ako, ako, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been pushing for a, a real investigation of the Malampaya money because sa Kongreso, tinatanong ko lahat, meron na ako kayo na pakinabang dyan. Meron na ba tayo na kuwang mas ginaanong benepisyo? Nakakita na tayo ng langis. Meron ng oil production, mm-hmm. commercial uh, level, bu- volume. And yet, wala tayong pakinabang. Ang mahal-mahal ng kuryente sa, sa Pilipinas. Kaya, kinonfront ko si... I've been mean pushing for this issue. Si Kusi. Mm-hmm. Siya ngayon ng Secretary Energy Secretary. Of, yes. Siya na namamahala, namamahala ng pera ng malampaya. Sabi ko, Saan mo dinadala yung pera? Daan-daan billion na yan. Every year kumikita yan. Mm-hmm. Billions of dollars. Where do you bring the money? Alam mo, sagot niya sa akin? Mm-hmm. Binibigay namin yun sa murang kuryente program. Huh? Murang kuryente. Yung pala may utang na loob pa tayo sa gobyerno. <laughs> Mura pa lang itong kuryente natin. Hindi kamahal sa buong Asia. Eh, dapat po pala, isinunod natin yung ehemplo sa Vietnam. Kasi hmm. sa Vietnam ho, subsidize yung gasoline nila Correct. dahil right. meron silang sariling gasoline product. Correct. Mm-hmm. Dapat ganun. Maski na konti man lang sabihin ng Pilipino, aba, meron akong nakukuha ng liman libo buwan buwan dyan mm-hmm. sa Malampaya production. That's right. Wala eh. Oh. Nag-umpisa production ng Malampaya 2020. Mm-hmm. Tama. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Year 2000. Year 2000. 21 years na nagpo-produce yan. So, can you imagine how much money it has already produced? Walang pakinabang ang tao dyan. And then before they, they even uh, make an accounting of where the money really goes, binenta na kay Dennis Uy. Right. So, Actually, yeah, at this point though, ang tanong ko sa'yo kung uh, LA, it seems that you are more effective as a legislator than, you know, transferring to the executive if you become well, a vice president. Uh, alam mo, so, may, li- may limit eh. And hindi ka naman pwede mag, 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 make it three terms. Mm-hmm. You know that. After three terms, you have to Term out. step out. That's right. So what so, do you do? So do you think that... I was uh, planning to retire. That's the truth. Ah, I wanted yes. to enjoy life for a change. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, 50 years ako sa politika. Mm-hmm. 50 years ako sa servisyo. Pwede naman siguro mag-retire na. Dami-dami ko nang nagawa. Talaga ako bibilangin ko. Kami ang nag-umpisa ng Senior Citizens Benefit Program. Mm-hmm. Kami ang nagbigay ng, ng paraan sa, para yung mga sanggol na tinatapon sa kalye. Uh, inaalagaan namin. Nakakapagligtas kami ng buhay. Kaya ako pinagmamalaki ko, Al. Buhay pa ito. Hindi, ang pinakamaraming anak sa buong mundo siguro. Mm-hmm. Eh si Lito at Yansa. 820 na ang bilang ko. Eh, ng mga Ng mga sanggol na natutulungan ko at ngayon ay eh, matagumpay ang buhay nila. 820. And we organized also the biggest women's organization mm-hmm. in Manila. Yung kababaihan ng Maynila. I am happy um, to hear that. So, mar- marami na tayo nagawang mga kabutihan. I figure, I can already retire. Pero kung LA, um, you chose not to retire to help uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao, hindi ba? Sabi mo kanina yung statement mo, you don't really care about your winning. Paano mo naman matutulungan si Senator Manny Pacquiao if he becomes president and you don't win as vice president? Well, you will at, become at, his number one advisor Definitely. Cabinet. Definitely. No, not, not necessarily cabinet. Advisor. Super uh, bulong brigade. <laughs> <laughs> Yun ang pinaka-effective. Yun. Alam mo. With your wealth of experience, ano? Uh, so, alam mo, tinatanong ako niyan eh. Ano ba ang plano mo? Ano ba programa ng gobyerno mo? Mm-hmm. Plataforma mo? Sabi ko ako, wala akong plataforma. Busy President yung tinatakbuhan ko eh. Mm-hmm. Si Manny Pacquiao, siya President, siya may programa. Mm-hmm. Yung programa niya, sinusuportahan ko. Mm-hmm. I know his program, it goes and starts with fighting corruption. That's right. And jailing big uh, personalities to set the example and so that everybody will follow. Mm-hmm. Kasi kaya wala naman sumusunod sa corruption dito. Uh, sa batas laban sa corruption. Dahil wala naman nakukulong sa corruption eh. 
That's true. Uh, pag mayaman ka, huwag ka magbayad ng buwis mo. Pinagdidibatihan pa whether you are disqualified or not. Di ba dapat automatic disqualification yun? Mm -hmm. uh, nagsinungaling ka sa COC mo. Sinabi mo, wala kang kaso. Ngayon, lumalabas, apat pala ang kaso mo. Tatlo ang decided na. Hindi ba disqualifying factor yun? Uh, you told a lie in your COC. At dito sa atin, pinag-uusapan pa. Eh kung mangyari na, makalusot yan. At gaya ng mga nangyayari sa nakaraan, nakakalusot ng mga kapangyarihan. O sino pa maniniwala sa tax paying? Ako mismo sabihin ko, ang laki-laki ng binabayaran ko. Almost half a million every year. Eh dapat pala yan, hindi ko na ibayad. Eh. Wala naman palang masama, eh. hindi ka magbayad. Eh. Pag nag-file ka ng certificate mo, Kim, you don't need to be careful anymore. Sabihin mo, eh kung nagkamali ako, nagkamali ako, In innocent error. Nakalagay doon, have you ever been convicted? Sinabi mo, no. Eh, di ba? That's a big lie. Kaya ako, naniniwala ako kay Manny na kailangan may nakukulong para magtanda ang tao. Uh, isa po sa mga pangako ni Senator Manny Pacquiao, nakapag siya ay naging Pangulo ng Pilipinas, ay magbibigay siya ng mga pabahay sa mga may hirap. Paano po ito ma-implement kung lito? Alam nyo, yung kanyang pangako, sinasakayunan ko eh. Sa a real reformist, revolutionary type of government, pwede natin ibigay, bigyan ng bahay, yung tunay na mahirap, natutulog sa parke, natutulog sa damuhan, sa sidewalk, mga bata nandun lumalaki sa sidewalk. We should give them justice, social justice ang tawag dyan. Sila pinaghirap ng gobyerno, sila pinakaargabyado sa lahat. To give them a free unit, bubong lang, at uh, higaan, tirahan, tama naman yun. Pag sinasabi, bakit si, ba't mo bibigyan? You teach them how to fish. You cannot teach them how to fish anymore because they have been deprived of their rights as Filipino citizens for the past 40, 50 years. It's time that government backtracks. Bigyan mo ngayon ng bahay yan. Makabawi-bawi tayo ng konti. Sa sinasabi ni Magsaysay, Those who have less in life should have more in law. Yes. Ito, those who have been deprived of the rights as citizens of the country should now be given an opportunity to enjoy life as Filipinos. Ngayon, yung programa ngayon, pag tumakbo, at talagang nalinis natin ng gobyerno ng corruption, in two years' time, I figure, makakapagtayo tayo ng mga 10 million homes. Doon, makakakuha na ng bahay ang lahat. Yung productive sector natin. Mm -hmm. Yung mga may sweldo naman, pero wala rin bahay. Mga 6 million ang ating backlog. Eh. Mabibigyan ng bahay lahat dyan. Pag nagtagumpay na yung pera ng gobyerno ay magamit para sa pangangailangan at hindi nagpupunta sa bulsa ng namumuno. Oo, napaka, napakagandang pakinggan po niyan kasi But, natatandaan niyo po. Wala kang paraan para mag-succeed kung hindi gawin mo yan. Tama. Pag hindi mo ginawa yan, as I see the other candidates coming from the old mm -hmm. tradi traditional way. Meron silang pagkakaisa na nabu, kulang na lang kumanta sila ng happy days are here again. <laughs> actually, uh, alam mo, tinutukoy ko kung sino. Pongaleo, actually, meron pa tayong, uh, ako naman, ibabalik ko kayo ng konti dahil okay lang po na pag-usapan natin yung mga programa ni uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao because uh, he is your running mate and as president. Pero as vice president, ano po yung mga programa, halimbawa, kayo po ang pareho ang palarin, ano po yung mga programa ang gusto nyong isulong sa vice presidential office ba? At bago po ninyo sagutin yan, magbabalik po kami. Diyan lamang po kayo. Maswerte tayo dito sa Pilipinas eh. Diba? Ang daming pwedeng uh, itamna. Basta masipag lang. Kailangan po ma-aware na ang tao sa tunay na kahulugaan ng Virgin Coconut Oil. Technically, kahit anong kunin mong lemongrass, and hindi mo siya endemic sa Pilipinas, pero dahil tropical country tayo, madali siyang musko. Ang Itik Pinas po ay may tatlo pong uh, kulay. Yun pong itim, kaki, at saka kayong tayo mangge. At ito po yung mga health benefits ito. Saka bakit po ito yung napili natin? Yung Madre de Agua, isa po siyang halaman na mataas sa protina na pwede nating itanim sa paligid natin. 
Natutuwa naman na paulitan nyo kami. Dalangin ko din ang patuloy na pagtatagumpay at kalusugan at ang kanyang mga kasama at buong pamilya. Agree ako dyan. Season 3. At nagbabalik po tayo dito sa diretsyong pananaw. Ang amin pong uh, kaninang huling katanungan sa ating uh, guest ngayong araw na ito na si Kong Lito Atienza na siya namang tumatakbong running mate ni uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao. No? Eh, Kong LA, pag kayo po ay pala rin na maging vice president, eh ano naman po yung mga programa na gusto nyong isulong pag kayo ay nakaupo? Alam mo, Congresswoman, yun lamang pangako namin na magkaroon ng bahay ang bawat Pilipino. Mm -hmm. Tama na yun. Wala ka nang dapat ipangako. Pa. So, Office of the Dapos, Vice President? Lang. Yung pangakong uh, alisin natin ng korupsyon, mm -hmm. yun lamang. Magsaksin kami ni Manny. Palagay ko, ang pangalan namin magiging ginto sa ating kasaysayan. Eh, paano kung At, kayong kapag, naging Vice President? Nga, tapos iba ang naging Presidente? Ay, gagawin ko ang lahat. Hindi, tanong mo sa akin kung ako ang mananalong Vice President. Mm. Anong gagawin ko ang lahat upang tulungan si Manny Pacquiao? Ayon. Tulungan. Kaya sabi nga nila, saan ka mag-opisina? Para matulungan ko siya, kailangan ang sa opisina ko sa Malacanang. Tama. Kasi pag ikaw ay nagpunta ron sa Boracay Mansion, mm. layo nun. Pag ikaw ay pumunta sa Coconut Palace, malayo yun. Physi lapit -lapit lang physically separated. That's true. Doon ako sa Malacanang, hihingi ako ng opisina kay Presidente Pacquiao, para araw-araw, oras-oras, kung anong kailangan mong tanungin, andun lang ako. Tawagin si Vice. Andun ako in 2-3 minutes. Hindi yung babiyahe pa ako sa traffic, ang daming wang-wang-wang-wang dyan. <laughs> hey, di, let's do the real thing. Right, that's right. Uh, if you really want to help, you, you should not have your own agenda. Ang agenda ko mag-succeed siya. Mm -hmm. And yun nga, even physically, I will do my best so that every day, lahat yung mga katanungan niya, immediately nakaka-contribute nakaka ako. What's good in Manny Pacquiao and his intelligence level, he listens. Mm -hmm. Manny Pacquiao is a listening man. So he will be a listening president. Hindi yung tipong, nag, ganito, ganito, pag ayaw mo, murahin ka. Hindi, ito. He will, he will talk it out with you. And if you're correct, he will follow you. That's why he got well with... Uh, Freddie Roach, remember? Mm -hmm. He could even be uh, <laughs> very difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. And yet, Manny uh, took all his advices, and that made him a better boxer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, kailangan nakikinig ang Pangulo. Eh. Tama yun. I, I agree with you on that, Kong LA, kasi it's very important. Kasi you're just the representative of the people mm -hmm. in in reality, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, kung ano yung wishes ng tao, sana papakinggan. Bibi, mo, bibigyan ko an example, ha? in world leaders and world history. Mm -hmm. See, Winston Churchill okay. is the one of the best known leaders of the world whose main quality is uh, listening to the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nung Second World War, the whole British Parliament was ready to give up and surrender to Germany because Hitler was already at the uh, boundaries of uh, England. And Parliament they, they were almost united and unanimous that they, England should surrender para hindi sila mamatay at hindi sila maperwiso, masira. You know what the Prime Minister did? Wala siyang ano. Winston Churchill has no degree, no undergrad. At una, pinagtatawa ng siya, one of the most uh, uneducated leaders of UK. Mm -hmm. What he did, he went to the trains different, in different direction. He asked the people directly. Gusto ba niyong gumibap na tayo? So, surrender tayo sa Germany. The answer was very clear. The young, especially, were shouting, No! Mm -hmm. We will never surrender! We will fight to the last drop of our blood! A lot of us will die. We don't care if we die. Ganon ang sigaw ng bayan. He rode buses and asked the same question. Nagulat mm -hmm. siya mga tao. Mr. Prime Minister, is that you? Yes. I just came here and rode this bus to ask all of you. Would you like to surrender to Germany? They're already coming in. And the answer was a very loud no. He went back to Parliament and delivered that very, very historic, meaningful speech mm -hmm. where he declared the sentiments of the people. There should be no surrender and no giving up. 
to the last drop of the British blood. The rest is history. UK together with America and the Allied forces won the Second World War. E con come pa più presidenti dal graduate c'è nang Wharton eh. Uh, the practical <laughs> thing. Wo kay yung ganyan kong eli yung anak ko graduate nang Wharton undergrad at summa cum laude so anyway. Pero talaga graduate. Ah uh, talaga graduate siya kinuha na siya sa hindi American. Hindi nagsisinungaling ha. Ah hindi hindi na. Mapakita natin. Anyway. Sige. Since binanggit nyo na yung, ano, eh, yung no retreat, no surrender, eh, no? Mm. nung panahon ng Second World War. So, ganito rin siguro ang sinusunod nyo ni Senator Manny Pacquiao. No? Kasi kung titignan po natin ang mga surveys, palagi pong nasa ibaba no? ang well, ranking I'll, ni Senator Manny Pacquiao. So, react, ano po ang masasabi nyo sa mga oh, surveys? Let me react immediately to that statement. Yung mga survey pagdating ng kampanya sa Pilipinas, ha? Mm -hmm. yan ay propaganda na eh. Kaparte na ng propaganda yan. Ginagasto sa ng mga kandidato yan. You know very well. Pag binayaran ko yung survey Kayo study, magiging number one. Ba, syempre, babayaran oh. ba kita ng, ng pagkalaki-laking pera kung gagawin mo ako kulelat? So, ibig sabihin? At, sigurado, yung pinakamalakas, yun ang ginagawa ang kulelat. Kaya ako, hindi ako bothered yung survey. Ang nararamdaman ko, yung nakikita ko. Yung sinisigaw ng mga taong pinupuntahan namin. Mm -hmm. The surveys, that kind of a survey, It's very clear. Pacquiao is, is the sure winner in this campaign. Ngayon lang ako nakakita ng kampanya talagang lumalabas ang tao, mabalita lang. Pacquiao is already here. Andito na si Manny. Saka nakakita ng ganun. Eh, dito mga Actually, mga politik. lahat po kasi ng uh, tao proud sa mga achievement niya. Correct. Because, mm -hmm. uh, oo, oh, ngayon lang tayo may, nagkaroon may, ng... May halong utang na loo eh. Para bang mahal ka namin, Manny. Huwag ka mag-alala. Bibigyan ka namin ngayon ng support. Ah. Nakapag, yeah. Nakapag-campaign na po ba kayo sa mm. up north? Mm. Ano po? Paano naman po? Dumaan kami sa Pangasinan. Sige nga po. Ano po ang <laughs> naging reaction sa inyo? Overwhelming. Saan Sabi nga ng mga kaibigan ko sa Pangasinan, mm. akala namin Marcos country ito. Mm. Pacquiao country pala ito. Eh. Wow. Mga tiga, rin yun, mga tiga rin yung nagsabi sa akin noon. Of course, hindi lang sinasabi. So, hindi Pabulong po, yun. Hindi Parang po yun, yung, yung solid tama. north. Parang yung laban ko kay Manny... Kay... Hindi niya sinagot, attorney Ann. <laughs> ano oh. ano yan? Sabi ko, hindi po ba totoo yung solid north? I don't want to uh, challenge them. Tama. Uh, uh, Very but, good answer, but Kong Eli. I will not be shocked if Manny Pacquiao wins by a landslide, even in the north. Okay. Kalaga? Okay, that's really something to look forward to, no? Pero meron po akong ibabalik lang ng konti, Kong L.A. You said, uh, as uh, his advisor, number one advisor, when he becomes president in, uh, in Malacanang, you will be there right beside him, he listens. Pero paano po kung ang issue, magkaiba kayo ng pananaw? For example, uh, ngayon, di ba? O oh, yung sa death yan. penalty na yan. Ma oh. Magantan. Mm -hmm. oh, di ba nagbago na siya? Hindi pa, hindi ko narinig. Hindi na nagbago eh. na. Ano Kasi pro-life kayo. Eh. I, I no longer pro support. Pro-life kayo, hindi ba? Oh, mm. I no longer support the death penalty. Right. To me, That shows the man listens. Because pinag-usapan namin eh. O paano pag yung sa mga iba, paano nyo... Papaliwanag ko sa'yo, Kim. Sige. Kung sakaling iba yung ginagawa niya. Since I am number two, mm -hmm. nasabi ko ng lahat, eh hindi niya, ayaw niya sumunod, I'll keep my mouth shut because yun ang aking tungkulin. Hindi para hiyain ang Pangulo. Kaya ako sinasabi si Lenny, hindi ako believe sa kanya dahil naging Vice President siya ni Duterte. Mm -hmm. From the very start, day one, minumura na niya, minamaliit na niya yung Pangulo. Oh. Ano ginawa ng Pangulo? Di minaliit din siya, inaaway din siya, iniinsulto siya. From the very beginning, nag-away sila. Mm -hmm. Ako naging number two ako. When I ran in Manila, I was vice mayor. And I was vice to a man na mahirap din pakisamahan. Mm -hmm. Parang Duterte yun. Yun na nag-invento ng EJK. Ang tawag namin dyan, salvaging. Mm -hmm. Pinapatay na lang yung mga bata sa mga communities pag suspect siyang drug pusher o drug user. Mm -hmm. And I cannot agree with that. Yes. I will never agree to extrajudicial killing. But I did not embarrass him. I did not mm -hmm. accuse him in public of wrongdoing. I asked for a meeting. Kailangan mag-meeting tayo. Meron tayo pag-usapang importante. Priority one to. What I told him, sorry ko, Mr. Mayor, What you're doing is not acceptable to me. Mm -hmm. I want you to reconsider that. Dahil pag hindi nagbago ang direksyon ng polis, akong babangga sa inyo. I don't want that to happen. I really hope and pray 
na magbago ka. Ang, ang, ano, ng prinsipyo mo. Sa kanya kasi yung solusyon sa droga, ito ang solusyon ni President Duterte. Patayin lahat dyan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hindi mo sasaksin so dyan. So, did, did he listen to you? He like listened to me. Okay. Him? Kaya I'm talking from experience. Ah. But part of my 50-year experience, my mayor slowly shifted to a pro-life stance. Mm-hmm. So much so that Cardinal Singh called him the pro-life mayor of the world. So much so that President Aquino believed in him so much. Sabi niya, ito ang gusto kong mayor. Talagang naniniwala sa halaga ng buhay. Gustong gusto ko sabihin, ha? Gustong gusto ko, but I, I never did. You're both wrong because he really is going against his will. He wants to kill everybody. <laughs> but I did not do it. Right. You know what so, my point? I will do the same thing. Okay, so you think a vice president should always be publicly supportive Correct. and can criticize pub, uh, privately? Correct. You can discuss right. negatively against each other in private. Mm-hmm. You can say what you want in private. That's right. But when you are on, on, <laughs> on television, never contradict, never even embarrass mm-hmm. your president. Mm-hmm. As in Lenny in Dilang Television, she went to the States and criticized openly Duterte. Mm-hmm. Ano pagbalik niya rito, sabi, you're fired. She got fired at the airport because, eh, ayaw mo pala sa akin, kinipinipintasan mo ko. You cannot be in my cabinet. Oh, she, was, she was social welfare administrator That's at the right. time. That's right, oo. And she was given a post. Uh, drug czar. O sige, ikaw na magpatupad ng drug campaign natin. Mm-hmm. The first thing she did was to denounce the killings and all the Itong policy ni Duterte ito, hindi ko susundin ito. Mm-hmm. Oh, she got removed after about five days, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's my point. Pag yung magulang eh, nag-aaway sa harap ng mga anak, eh, maghihirap dyan ang buong pamilya. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yan ang nangyari sa ating Kelly. Eh. Kaya, now that she's running for president, I feel she did not do her job properly. And I will not be a Lenny Robredo. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. okay. So Pero that, kung makikita sure, natin, dating na, nasa liberal party pa rin ho ba kayo? Hindi na. Na Atchen sa wing? Hindi na. Nasa Abiyag Prom din na. Wala nang Matagal wing-wing. Matagal na yun. Alam Actually, mo, sige. the moment Pinoy became president, he belonged to that other side. Mm-hmm. Drilon, Abad, Rojas, Pinoy. Nung nanalo siya presidente, ako na mismo nagsabi sa mga kasama ko. Wala nang ano, wala nang wala nang wing. Lahat kayo, sumama na kayo kay Pinoy. Eh, ikaw. Ako hindi ako sasama dyan. Sabi ko. Dahil? Eh, fundamental yung aming diferensya. Mm. I did not join him. I remained independent. And that's the reason why I get, gave my full time on, in Buhay Party List. Because mm. hindi na ako liberal. But, I, I, but I'm, I'm very proud. My family is one of the founders of the Liberal Party. It was founded in Manila mm-hmm. in 1946. So historically, my roots are connected with the Liberal Party. The real Liberal Party. Eh? <laughs> okay. hindi, hindi ito Liberal Party ngayon. Ito, naku, Diyos ko. <laughs> Diyos ko. Yun din ang masasabi mo ngayon, ha, Kong L.A. Diyos ko. Actually, now, moving to that, ngayon po nakikita natin multi-party system tayo. At hindi lang multi-party, ang dami pa, nanganganak ng nanganak. So, um, now we have the spectacle of so many political parties now in the field. Ano po bang masasabi ninyo? And this that, is that is this should be the way? This is not what we fought for. Mm-hmm. This is not dem- democracy. Mm-hmm. It is democracy. 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 <laughs> That's true. So, Dahil what... talagang hindi, hindi ito ang pinaglaban natin demokrasya. Mm-hmm. Yung nakikita natin ngayon is an aberration, yeah. abnormality of the democratic principle. So, Yung yeah. multi-party mm-hmm. is a no-party. Kung sino-sino na lang may partido ngayon. Mm-hmm. Oh, Pero okay. meron bang organization yan? Meron bang genuine Grassroots, wala. Mga pangalan lang yan. Apat na partido, sinusuportan si ganun. Apat na partido, apat na tao lang yan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, what is... Baka apat na jeep naman. O baka. Depende sa jeep kung ilan yung pwede kisahay. Oo nga naman. Pero, Pero, yung, oh, sige. Kasi nabanggit ni Kong Lito kanina, na sabi niya, itong housing, kapag meron tayo housing for the poor, okay na yan. Mm-hmm. Kapag na-address natin ng corruption, okay na yan. Mm-hmm. How about po yung drug problem in the country? How would you address that? Hey, more intelligently. Like how? You don't solve the problem by killing. That's number one. You solve it by proper uh, education, especially of the biggest uh, sector, the young. You have to educate them against drugs. Mm-hmm. 
And then you have to have an effective enforcement, not killing, uh, effective enforcement of the laws, but not necessarily killing the suspects, never, to a real effective rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So prevention, enforcement, and then rehabilitation. rehabilitation. Doon lang tayo magkakaroon ng tunay na solusyon. Actually, Kong L.A., ang gusto kong itanong sa'yo, when you were a uh, Manila mayor, for all three terms, no? So, sa hinaba-haba po na yun, ano po bang inyong naging policy uh, on drugs? And uh, what do you think are the ones that would be applicable on a national basis? Yung sinabi ko. Hmm. Uh, the edu the edu edu education. Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because nung panahon ko, napaliit ko yung drug problem. Okay. And I told the police, you kill anyone by salvaging them, I will personally prosecute you. Kala ko sasabi mo, I'll personally kill you. You don't kill. You don't kill. Kala ko sasabi niya, I will take personal responsibility and protect you. No, I really, I really, I really did. Yes. Eh, yung sa rehabilitation po. What were your programs back then that could probably be applicable on a national level? A real rehabilitation program. Hindi yung superficial. Yung ginawa ninyo talaga dito sa Manila. Yes. We developed mga rehab, rehab centers. Mm -hmm. It functioned, uh, several of them. And yung mga drug victims, I, I, I even call them victims, not drug pusher. Uh, yung mga nasangkot, mm -hmm. eh, na namin makarecover. Okay, so uh, Kong LA, yung pong uh, sinasabi po natin yung tukul sa droga, no? Eh, kayo po, dung sa term ninyo as Manila Mayor, for a good uh, nine, nine years, di ba? Ano po yung uh, inyong mga policies na naging successful dito sa, sa droga, sabi nyo hanggang sa rehabilitation, and what could be applicable on a national uh, scale? What we did, I believe, would easily be applicable to the national level. Mm -hmm. Tell us wala, namang, wala namang ibang elemento kami ginamit. Eh. Rehab center, a journey program for rehabilitation mm -hmm. and uh, including spiritual uh, rejuvenation. Yes. Kasi yung mga drug victims, madalas dyan, marami sa kanila, pati yung kanila spiritual uh, well-being, eh, apektado na rin. Wala, na, nawala, nawalay sa Diyos. Kaya nakipag-ugnayan ako sa mga lahat ng religious organizations who have uh, anti-drug programs, a rehabilitation program, mm -hmm. And I gave them access to the different rehab centers para bigyan nila ng spiritual spiritual direction and dimension yung mga drug addicts na binibigyan namin ng tulong. Eh yung mga police po, yung enforcement level na. Ayun, dun is strict ako, is strict ako. Oo, paano ginawa nyo nun? Ba, didisiplinahin mo. Eh pa, paano natin didisiplinahin ng police? Sisantihin mo. You use wrong methods, not in line with my program. You're out. This is second chance, sir. Wait, oh, there are many padrinos. I'm calling you, Krame, General. So how do you deal with it? You just say no. When you say no, you mean no, and that's it. So on a national scale, kaya po. Kaya yan. Ang kulang natin na kompasuman is enforcement. That's another issue. Kaya tayo maraming mga problema ng lumalala. Dahil ang batas, yun nga eh, hindi na napapatupad eh. And Sir, baka corruption in uh, the police and the military. Correct. Kasama, kasama rin yan. Yan no. po ang totoo, hindi kasama po Kasama rin yan. No. Oh. Corruption sa... So how will you address that? Eh, eh, napaka Napakahirap po. Kaya na sabi ko sa'yo, pag succeed lang kami dyan, okay na sa akin eh. Mm -hmm. You improve the conditions in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. You improve the conditions in the police uh, sector. Mm -hmm. Even in the military. And of course, the uh, civilian government. Uh, kailangan bumalik yung disiplina na walang tatanggap ng lagay mm -hmm. at mag-iingat kayo. That's the only way we will really progress. That's the way Hong Kong did it, mm -hmm. Singapore did it, Korea is doing it. Up to now, they're grappling with corruption. That's Pero kita ba, nakita ba nyo, every president in Nakukulong. Korea, nakukulong at, <laughs> at nasesentensyahan. Nakukulong. Oh, oh. Kaya mag-improve mag din ang ekonomiya dyan. The economy is genuinely attached to the lack or uh, corrupt practices within government. So, yun ang ating dapat consistently pagtulong-tulungan. Mm -hmm. If we succeed there, 
the Filipinos will progress. I cannot, I cannot see any reason bakit hindi matutupad yung yung talagang purpose ng ating pagkakalika. Ang Pilipino ay hindi nilika para maghirap eh, para maging pulubi. Ang Pilipino, katulad ni Manny Pacquiao, may galing. Mm -hmm. Bawat Pilipino ang sinisilang. Marami dyan, gifted. Pero hindi nila talaga pakinabangan because ang sistema natin, ano eh, bal baluktot. Si Manny, pag ginawati yung buhay niya, mm -hmm. and I hope he attends your session here one day, he tells his story, hindi nga siya tanggapin sa Olympic team eh. Hindi siya binigyan ng initial uh, qualification Talaga? test. Talaga? Sabi sa kanya, wala kang kinabukas sa boxing. Huwag ka na mag-apply. Subukan lang naman ninyo ako. Hindi, hindi ka pwede. Patpating ka eh. Magpahit na pwede si Manny nung. O, tinan niya yan. Oh. Hindi nakita ng mga Olympia, Olympic ano, uh, committee yung potential ng isang tao. Right. Ay, ngayon, araw-araw, nangyayari yan. Maraming Pilipino na hindi nabibigyan ng pagkakataon. Okay. Ayun ang ating babaguhin. I, I, I agree with you on that. Eh, nabanggit din niya, Attorney Al, ito na lang yung huli sa akin. Eh, yung sa economy. Okay, so, napag-usapan po natin yung uh, on other issues. Paano naman po natin bubuhayin ang economy coming from a pandemic? Marami tayong mga ekonomist ng magagaling. I will not even um, approximate the full potentials of the economies of the land. Mm -hmm. Pero ano man ang ganda ng economic program mo, Kim, kung ang corruption hindi mo mapipigil, the best economic programs will just go to the canal, mm -hmm. to the estero. So, economia, let's give it to the best economic minds of the country. Marami right. tayo niyan. Lalo na yung mga bata ngayon na inip na inip na rin. Galit na galit na rin sa buhay nila na Mukhang wala tayong hinaharap sa sarili natin bansa. Wala tayong pinatutunguhan. Mm -hmm. ano? Bigay natin sa kanila yung problema. Oo, attorney Al. Uh, siguro, uh, yan na ang huling katanungan natin kay Kong Lito. Kasi alam ko, mayroon pa siyang susunod na meeting dito. So, uh, bibigyan natin siya ng pagkakataon ngayon na makausap ang ating mga manunood. Oo, yes. Ano po ang mensahe nyo sa ating mga manunood at mga botante, Kong Lito? Dito, Kong LA. Sa... Marami salamat, uh, Al. Congresswoman, itong aking pagkakataong ito ay pararating ko sa ating mga kababayan. Hindi pa ba kayo pagod sa katarantaduhan sa loob ng gobyerno? Hindi pa kayo naniniwala kaya tayo mahirap ay dahil sa corruption? Kung kayo naniniwala, may tao tayong pwedeng pagkatiwalaan. Si Manny Pacquiao. At kung iboboto naman niyo si Manny Pacquiao, huwag niyo kalimutan si Vice Presidential Candidate Tito Atienza. Pero kung ako lang ibuboto nyo, kalimutan na nyo. I don't want to be vice president to any of these potential presidents. I don't want to be part of a government that will not address the problem effectively. Only, only Manny Pacquiao, to, me, to my mind, can do that. Please consider us. Okay, so okay. Um, maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Congressman Lito Atienza, ang ating uh, House Deputy Speaker, and also uh, running mate of uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao uh, for this coming elections. And uh, like he said, Attorney Al, gusto niya, pagka uh, iboboto niyo siya, iboto niyo rin yung presidente niya. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, wag na lang. Wag so na. all or nothing, hindi ba? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kasi, maraming maraming salamat. Kasi ko, yun talaga ang dapat mangyari, no? When well, you vote for oh, the president, vote for the vice president so para they can work harmoniously. Di ba? So, with that, tating tatapos na naman ng another episode ng Diretsong Pananaw. Maraming salamat po, Deputy Speaker Lito Atienza. Okay, so, dyan po nagtatapos ang aming mainit na talakayan ngayong araw na ito at magbabalik ang Diretsong Pananaw sa susunod na linggo. Ako po, si Kim Bernardo Lokin. Ito naman po, si Alvi Tangkol. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Hanggang sa susunod po. Nakalimutan niyo may extra. <laughs> <laughs> Ikaw naman talaga. <laughs>